Barber Cause Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, and Craig's Crown Cuts, downtown Johnson City. Today, we're going to talk about a special topic. We're going to keep you guys guessing, and we're going to keep you guys coming. This is real big. We got a special guest, and back in the studio, my co-host, a warm welcome. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> What's your name? I know you're and, back. What's your name? Am right? I Fields? Am I your barber? <laughs> Blessed to be here again. Make the drive to Tennessee. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming through. <laughs> drop these jewels. Drop these earn the crown. Hashtag earn the crown. And my, my guest, introduce yourself. <clears throat> Hello, guys. Hello. My name is Donald Soto. I'm bartender at Watauga Brewery. Also, a brewmaster assistant. Also, worked with Craig for a very long time. Was in the uh, barber college industry as well, helping him out. And yes. I just wanted to say, also, I'm very, very proud of all your accomplishments and stuff. And look up to you, man. Appreciate everything you've done appreciate for us you, in the community. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is extra special because Don is the person who helped me start Crown Cuts Academy. It was just him and I. I was a teacher. He was in, in the front, answering the phones, enrolling the students making it happen and that, that was special appreciate you d i nice. mean much love a thousand miles away and close by every day um shout out to market street media and latham my guy for having us in the studio again um, big shout out to my sponsors colossal brand i'm gonna have to bring colossal brand on the show probably next week I'm, have, I'm, have I'm come heard soon. Of this colossal brand oh i met the guy yeah you I met him, him you met him, you met him. We, we, he's gonna come on and do his thing Major sponsor, check him out. Go cmcolossal.org. He got some really good stuff. Um, I'll bring him on and let him talk about his his journey and how he's getting where he's going. And again, thank you for feed spot for the top 25 podcast in the world, top 25 in the country of Barber College content. We're going to keep earning the crown, keep dropping jewels. Today, we're going to talk about tips and tipping. What are our views on tips. Why is it important? And should you look for tips? Because some people, some barbers get offended when they don't get a tip. And we'll, we'll elaborate and talk about these things. So when you hear about tipping, my guy, am I, what, what, what comes to your mind? I have a lot of emotions <laughs> thoughts when it comes to tipping. Um, I think that the, the misconception is that um, I think tips are expected. I think especially the reason tips are expected is because a lot of people come from like who are in the server industry. That's how they make their money. They don't get paid. Right. You get two fifteen an hour. So that's they they need tips to to make their money. You should tip servers right. and bartenders of everybody. Of course, you should really tip anybody that requires a tip. But I believe my my belief with barbering is you shouldn't expect a tip. I think that you set your price for your services for what mm -hmm. you think your services are worth. And then anything after that is a tip. It's so, a bonus. It's a exactly, plus. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If, you, if you're a barber and you feel like that you should get tipped on every single haircut, you should get five plus dollars or more on a tip. That means your prices for your haircut should be five more dollars. Right. And then you can get a tip. After that. Right. Right. That's true. What, what do you think, D? So tipping, you know, me right now, just in the um, service industry, you know, it's based off of or hard work and you know the barber when you're doing barbering i don't think you should not expect a tip and like am i said you know it's all about the base pay sure it does feel great you know but also in the process it's all about how what you're charging and what you're doing and maybe you know your regular is just a steady clientele that comes maybe they will throw you a cool little you know tip and stuff like that but no, I don't really think in the barber industry it should, you should expect a tip. Um, I, 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 I see both sides. Of, I see both sides where you shouldn't. Um, well, you shouldn't go into nothing expecting something. Exactly. exactly. Um, especially in, in the industry like that. Um, but I understand why some barbers expect it because a tip makes you feel good. It almost kind of solidifies your work and someone saying i'm gonna give you a little bit of extra to show that hey man you're doing real good but on the other hand you can't get upset you shouldn't get upset if someone don't give you a tip and most people are gonna show gratitude and give you i think 90 85 percent of people will show some gratitude and give you something 
and I, I think my like the clientele that I marketed to, like people that I want, the people that I want me to cut their hair mm-hmm. want to tip me. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever expect it, but I know that that I feel like they want to. Now there, there's a lot of times where I don't get tipped, which is fine because I set my prices to where I set them, and that and they understand that's the price and that's what they pay, and I shouldn't expect anything else. But I'm still not going to lower my services for anybody that doesn't right. tip me. Uh, uh, and that's key. And that's very, very key, you know. And uh, for example, you know, when you have your barbers, and they're all um, every seat's full, you have people in the waiting. You know, people do see see people working very hard. You know, you're trying to lift a chair and keep, you know, keep it rolling, keep slicing and dicing. And um, sure, people will definitely tip. You know, they'll appreciate that. They're saying like, hey, you know, he's he's hungry. He wants that hard work, and he's going to get rewarded. You know, and pay and in tips. Um, coming from where we're coming from in this industry, we're in the <clears throat> you in the you in the shop. I'm in the and the school, and you. I'm in the school mainly. Um, I've seen students come into the process, come into schools, and that thought process, man, that person didn't tip me. You should not have that on your mind when you're in school. No. You should not have that on your mind thinking this person didn't tip me and the next time I'm going to give them a below average cut because that's, what, that's what's going through your mind. But it's hard when you're a student and you see successful barbers making money, even though that's that's definitely possible for them to do that, to accomplish that by working hard. It's still hard like because I notice a lot of the students – can only work part time or work night shift jobs, so that kind of supplement a lot of times help those those students. Even though they shouldn't lean lean on that, it's just the reality of the whole student situation. That- You're in training. Just just build that passion. If you're looking for tips, you're not building that passion. You're not creating that barber he wants to be who's going to have longevity in the game. Sure. Build that passion up first, and your gratitude. People will see it and, and, and offer you gratitude through your passion and your joy for your work. Of course. <clears throat> I definitely believe that too. Um, even though, I mean, I just speak, I was just speaking on the reality of, yeah. of being a student and how I'd see the perspective of somebody that would want tips as a student. I think, I believe that if you work on, you know, building, building yourself up and, and finding a love for the, for the art of it, that you will actually, get those tips it will ha- it's just something that's just going to happen and i believe that anybody that does well at their job that re- has some kind of tipping system thoroughly believes that like i you're a bartender i know that you out there you start spinning bottles around somebody gonna throw a, a couple dollar bills in a yeah, jar of course of course yeah they um a lot of people and a lot of like you know of the regular customers that i have mm-hmm. you know they come in and they sit down they i know what they like i'll bring it to them offer them any other services that i could from getting extra food or hey let me top you off your water or Let me top off your beer. And then, yeah, like, if you're expecting tips, first off, come work in the restaurant industry. (laughs) For sure. I did that for four years. Yeah, so you understand. But, um, no, in the uh, barbering side of things, though, you know, the tip is the passion. You know, you're also doing a lot. You're mentally thinking about a lot of things. And like you said, you know, and if you are on that mentality of, oh, he didn't tip. I'm not going to give them that quality service. How does that represent you? Right. You know? So it shouldn't be for like a tip that you're going to, you know, ruin your day or give somebody not your best haircut, yeah. which you should do every time. Exactly. Because you, just the gratitude of them letting you practice on them, that's almost a tip. Oh, of course. I, I, yeah, for sure. And and it's, especially if you got somebody with great hair and, you know, you're like, man, because, th- you know, anybody that, you know, that cuts hair, if you get somebody good hair, that may, that's a blessing, like, sometimes, because you get to actually try new styles right. and things like that. So I feel like in that regard, they definitely help you out. And, of course, they help pay you your bills. I mean, that's just – that's the sad reality. Like, we're entrepreneurs and we're our own people, but at the same time, everybody's our boss. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, we kind of work for the public. In that Show regard. the industry some gratitude. Exactly. And not look for the, that tip first. For sure. Because yeah. people can see your work ethic. They can see your drive. And that's when they go above and beyond for you. Of course. Of course. And that is 100% true. You know, as when we started working together at first, you know, you started seeing the passion that I was growing and times were tough and all of that. But we still, you know, we kept pushing. Right. And you were just so very proud of me. And every time, we, you know, we'd work together, every week we'd come together, you'd be like, hey, you're doing great. Right. Take a step back, take a breath. And then just come back and start grinding. Right. But then, you know, that's when you show your passion, your hunger, and for the success. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that um, Barbara College will actually teach you is 
um, just being your own boss, having great people surrounding you at all times and just climbing your way up to success. And being a bartender, just I was thinking about how much like being like a bartender is so much like being a barber. Similar. Exactly. You bring, you're bringing clientele in. They enjoy your company. You speak to them. A lot of times you're giving mental health services. <laughs> a lot of times, probably more yeah. times than you want to. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then, advice. you know, the consultation part too, like finding out somebody comes in, like, I don't know what I want to drink. What do I want to drink? So, yeah. so like uh, the bartending industry is, is a lot similar, I would say to the barber industry. It's funny that you say consultation and I'm going to piggyback off of that. I think most people tips, come within their consultation if you can fix a problem for somebody that it alone will give you a lifelong client and make people want to give you their money more than anything because customer service is dead across the country in all industries for sure right. so it's, hurting. Can, <laughs> it's, it's hurting. hurting it's hurting so if you can set yourself apart in the consultation and in the customer service for your client when you're cutting someone's hair explain to them about the haircut explain to them about the products that you're using be real tentative to their needs and be able to give them answers for their questions, mm -hmm. you almost guaranteed to get some type of gratitude. For sure. Whether it's, um, you know, the person talking about you on another topic on a basis saying like, hey, you know, I went to Craig's uh, Barber College right. and I got to, you know, get really good advice, get really good help in paving my way into becoming a barber. You know, that right there just shows like, okay, so that's also word of mouth and that's just marketing, yeah. communicating and stuff that, which builds your clientele even better. You know, people start seeing that. People start hearing like, oh, wow, the barber college is booming mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it just coming in and then you build your clientele off of that. And sometimes the people that, that are perceived to be cheap or to be, uh, frugal or not those, a great tipper well yeah or not a great tipper but honestly those people's opinions on things are valued a little more because people know that they're going to go somewhere for the best value they're going to go somewhere where they can get the most for their dollar and if they recommend you and then they bring in other people that are more more giving than the person that suggested you you know that just helps you that helps your your value even and more it, and it just wages out exactly so, so it goes to ask this question would you rather get a referral or a tip? I guess a referral because a tip is right there is money in your pocket. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. But a referral allows you to continue to grow because if everybody's referring you and then you're only making, you're making this much for hair. But if your books are pouring, you know, out your pocket and you can just keep raising your haircut prices, then you're making yourself more valuable at that point. So it, it, it's almost, it's better so the best thing to work on is your customer service exactly. and your consultation. Because if your customer service is great and your consultation is over, overboard doing great things, because the most important part of a haircut is a consultation. If your consultation is great, you almost, <clears throat> you're going to get referred. And I cut a lot of college students. Um, shout out Henry Henry campus, but, but uh, college, but, you know, they're kind of on a budget. You know, they got ramen noodle and beer to mm -hmm. pay for. They got to come see my man right here. At the, you know what I'm saying? The rooftop. Very but it's like, like I'm saying. So I always tell them that the the best thing they can do besides a tip, shout me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Hit me with the eye on the Instagram right. story. That To me, that means way more than a tip. And it also gives me, it saves me some trouble of trying to build, continually keeping um, content on my social media and it, it makes it effortless for me so i can take a break you're not the only one marketing for yourself man. exactly i make it help everybody back mark for me and that saves me some time so i don't have to do it myself and not only that and people also got to realize you know when you get the referral and it's just going to keep going oh yeah keep going with that oh, sure. right, cool. so you're going to get a couple hair people that's going to be like wow i like the haircut i love what he did he did exactly what I wanted. And you know, yeah, I'm going to reward you if you can. And it just makes you more valuable. Like your exactly. time, your time and your service becomes way more valuable with that. Not only that, and it's more appreciative, you know, you're proud of the craft. Yeah. For example. And, and that's one thing that is really, really, I'm big on is just perfecting the craft. And that's one thing mm. I learned from Craig perfecting the craft, whether it's just your first haircut or in the crown, mm -hmm. you got to earn the crown. <laughs> so whether it's like the first haircut or like the first recipe that I'm going to, you know, make on the drink, stuff mm -hmm. like that, you keep grinding on it. You keep perfecting, you keep doing it on a repetitive. Yeah. What's the quote? Uh, 
treat your first like your last and your last like your first and make that your everything. Exactly. That's what it is. Exactly. And that's, I mean, yeah, better, better said than done. But um, no, for sure, definitely would love a referral. I personally, even in my industry right now, yeah, I would kill for a referral. I always tell people, hey, come see me at Wataga. I, um, I was working a festival a couple of days ago. And um, I was marketing myself, marketing the company, mm-hmm. Wataga, which, by the way, y'all got to come see me here soon. <laughs> just let y'all know. Yeah, awesome. got to come see me here soon. Yeah. But just being able to just market, you know, give my name, give the address of where I work. People are going to come. Yeah. Right. People are going to start stacking. And the greatest thing also when you're in the barbering industry is, you know, when you get that group of people, that team that you form. Yeah, everybody's just want to market each other. Oh yeah, you're gonna shout everybody out. Exactly. You know, whether it's just a post on the Instagram, you know, or tagging them, or, or just saying like, "Hey, come see my barber." And, and all those things come from just being real tentative, being real aware of your craft, honing your craft well, well, really, really well, giving your all, and being tentative to your client. Respect the game. <laughs> Bottom line. Just respect the game. I love it. Bottom yeah. line, because. Things that people do do not respect the game. Like like you were saying is you yeah, have a client. Mass amount tip you or anything you like get that. Mass amount don't tip you. You have a client in your chair. You have no dialogue with them. And that, and it's bad for the game too because if you're rude, if you're like, man, I don't want to cut your hair no more because you're not tipping me, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're making it harder on the next barber because, you know, they build that stereotype. You're building stereotypes of the industry when you do stuff like that. Right. And we don't want that. We no. at least, at least in this part of the world, we're all we're supporting everybody. Uh, the barbering industry is so loved, and there are some barbers too out there who just kind of want to be divas with it. But I, I think everybody needs to check themselves, and understand. Hey, this fraternity wants you in this industry. There shouldn't be no one that you shouldn't be able to bump fists with or be like, "Yo, you're in the industry. You're a barber. Let's chop. Let's chop it up. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation, yeah. and just go with a conversation forever." All about the networking. But I hate when barbers don't see that love and want to connect. I, that, I think that's it, it, after being in this this long. If they're not, if you're not openly speaking to other people in your industry or barbers, at least, like I think that I think that you're just you're 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 missing out yourself. You're just you're just hurting yourself. You're not you're not building relationships with people. You know, you're just going to be your one little corner shop. You know, I've ref, I've referred other barber shops, and I think that any barber that is good or is busy or or, or staying right staying busy will do that. Hey, I can't get you, but so and so can. And that's important. And that's where the referrals come in because, and that's where your tips come in as well. I think referrals. If you go about just trying to do your job to your best and rather just go after referrals, the tips will come. Yeah. The tips will just overflow. Yeah, of course. And uh, and that's what's going to get rewarding. You know, and that's when you still keep that same mentality that when you first started. Because and- how, how you treat people, every barber I've ever heard who have gotten a, a really large tip, 50 bucks, $100, $200, 250 whatever it may be, even, five, even more than that, $500,000. Somebody's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Every barber who I've heard of who gotten a lot of tip, it's because of their customer service. Of course. It's about the, their approach to the client. Because eventually a haircut is just a haircut. Everybody's gonna everybody fades is gonna be the same. Yeah. It might be a little different intricately, but at the end of the day, a fade and especially if you're just a client, you're like, uh, you it's, good. It's gonna be 15 minutes here, or 10 minutes there, or 25 minutes. That's that's the difference. Yeah. The time. But everyone fade is going to be pretty much the same if you're in this industry long enough and you love what you do. And I think also another thing that comes tips better is one thing that I've noticed that people respect you taking your time. So I think some barbers also get caught up in a grind. Like I got bust out a haircut every 15 minutes mm. and doing that sometimes you're just, yeah, you're getting the money right there in your pocket, but where are you building for your long term, your long term success? <laughs> I, I think you should give everybody minimum at least some haircuts you can you can knock out. Yeah, I mean if they want to buzz one all over yeah. and just edge it up, like that's gonna be yeah. Nothing. Some barbers you can some you can get some fades really if you have some good fine hair and you want to get a good fade you can knock it out by 15, 20 minutes. But I think you should give your clients at least twenty five to thirty five minutes in the chair. Yeah, yeah, and that fine line right there where they feel appreciated mm-hmm. and because you're listening to them. You're not just like right. uh huh. And at the same time, there are some people who just don't want to be in a chair that long. They'd rather just be in there, in and out. 
because they know the quality is going to be good. Yeah. But you still want to give your clients and tend to their needs and understand them and make them feel like they spend that money. Because most barbers now are charging upwards of $25, $30, $40 for a haircut. $50, yeah. $100. It's almost, the, I think the standard right now is probably like them, if you're across the country, I think the average haircut across the country might be like $30. Maybe. That's a lot. I mean, it depends where you are. You know what I mean? At thirty dollars. What was that? That one shot we went to in Boston. They were charging with seventy some dollars for a haircut. Right. And I, right on that street we went to. And... Yeah, yeah, that's that's down in um in Back Bay. Yeah. Yeah, they was. I mean, but the shop was nice. It was. It was. I mean, it was. It was. Tom well Br- thought out. Tom Brady lived on that street. Right. He, he was up there. He lived <laughs> on that street. So <laughs> I'm sure his rent is high. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's right. He he got he got he got charged for that haircut. You're right. But also, we all think about it too. You know, like at one point, you know, he he worked his way up. That barber mm-hmm. definitely did. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I know, you know, working with Craig in the back to the barber college, you know, and I I've seen a bunch of the students just grow, right? Mm-hmm. Grow up, charge, and all of that, like charge a more increased price, and it's well respected because at one point they started doing the five dollar, ten dollar haircuts. Yes. And then you start figuring out, okay, well, I got my diploma. I'm ready to, you know, go out into this industry. And grow and grind. Next level. Earn exactly. a crown. Exactly. I mean, it's important, though, and knowing where you come from. But that quote right there is so important. Make your first like your last, and make your last like your first, and make that your everything. If you make your hair cut like that, the first time you jump in the shop, the first time you jump into school, and you got that, when you finally found it, when it just clicked to you in school and it says, I can do this. You feel confident. You don't need no instructions. You just feel totally just, yeah, I'm here. Mm-hmm. You have to carry that on with you. Uh, until the end. Until the end. <laughs> yeah. Until, yep. until you ain't even breathing. You're taking your last breath. <laughs> you have to carry, you, you do. I mean, if you're in the industry, you, you, you have to. Mm-hmm. You have to carry that hunger. You have to carry that hunger for consultation. You have to carry the hunger for um, customer service. You have to carry the hunger for sanitation. You have to carry that hunger for continuing education because all those things adds up to your price. All those things add up how much you invested in this industry. That's what you're going to get out. Intellectual wealth. Yeah. Because some people just want to come in and think the industry is just going to be good to them automatically. No. Oh, what? And if you're doing anything and then just expecting results, great results, yeah. and you're doing nothing, then you're just setting yourself up for just a disaster, a failure. For sure. And uh, and you know, it happens in life. It happens, you know, at work. There's days where, you know, you're just not not feeling that flame. Yeah. Because what, what I don't want people to do, or students, or barbers, what I don't want them to do is finish a haircut, Someone say, oh, man, thank you. This looks great. I'm appreciative of this. You don't get a tip. And as soon as they walk away, you start bashing them or you get mad. Don't do that. I haven't had that happen yet don't, so far. Don't do that. It looks bad. It looks bad on you, the company, the instructors, and just anywhere. And, it, and the worst thing is, like, if, if, if other clients in the shop hear you right. saying something like that, because that makes them question whether their tips are – are, are good enough whether or not they think whether or not they might be great tippers but it still might think make them feel like okay you know maybe i'm not doing enough and they they feel uncomfortable to even go to the shop and you, and you don't want that because most people from my experience even people who don't tip they want to tip yeah and they probably can't but... and they probably can't mm-hmm. most people want to tip the, the ones that don't tip they want to Because if you go into a, a mark of um, prestige, if you you tip some people sometimes, yeah, you you look like like you want you feel like those people right then and there that value you value their time. Right. You wanted them to know that you really enjoyed what they did. So. And, you, and you appreciate it. But yeah. some people they can't because you have a lot of maybe some single mothers, mm-hmm. some people who are going through some issues. Some people in school. Some people in school. <laughs> Um, some people who don't have a job and some people who are transitioning to get a job who might just have just enough money to get that, that haircut. It's like on uh 
the movie barbershop where he tried to get the job and he needed a haircut to get the interview. Right. And he got the haircut and he left. He ran away. He stole the haircut pretty much. But then he came back and paid him and told him he appreciated it. he got the job that he just wasn't able to pay for the haircut. At the time. Right. So. And that happens. I mean, we do a community service, a community service at the school where we have free haircuts on the first Thursday and the third Thursday of the month. I can't tell you how many people who came back from getting a free haircut and said, hey, man, I really appreciate that. Thank you. We get messages all the time. People say, man, I needed that cut. I needed just that conversation with the student. Yeah. I know I didn't pay for the haircut, but it, it propelled me and helped me in so many ways than you ever thought. And they, they, and then they want to reciprocate that. Yeah. In a long term. And it looks so good on you as well. And it just makes you look more professional. It makes you showcase, like you know, your passion. Right. For success in the barbering industry, and that's how you build clientele. How often do you have to like, like, decide what the person wants? Is that like an every night thing where somebody's like, I don't really know, or this and that? Or is that something that like? Yeah, and and believe it or not, a lot of people, you know, go into the brewery and um, they ask questions like, "Okay, this is my first time trying to craft beer." Yeah. Luckily, I'm a brewmaster assistant, and uh, I know a lot more. I've mm-hmm. been, you know, getting much, much experience. Shout out to Ted, and. Um, just showcasing that and then showing them, you know, what I've learned, you know, teach you the difference between, you know, a dark style or a New England mm-hmm. or a sour saison, et cetera. And edu- I think educating your, your clientele also goes a long way. That's, as cons- far as that's it, consultation. Yeah. Be, just being able to teach them one thing, like for you, you know, the difference in the IPA and, and, and the regular IPA, I think it's just disgusting. No offense. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <Don't try it. laughs> anyways, or like if, if a person is not using the proper, uh, the proper shampoo or washing their hair too much. Right. I mean, it, it's the same thing. It's like you said, it, it, it's really applies to the same thing because people come in to the shop at times or to the school and they don't know what they want. They sit in your chair. They don't know what they want. Mm-hmm. And you have to break it down to them and show them what's a wavelength cut a flat top with some blowout and some people head shapes are different so you want to give them the proper haircut for the head shape for sure and for the occasion because there's some different things that you might be doing on a weekly basis you want something to fit you and that's the barber responsibility to help figure that out it's like the bartender yeah it took it sometimes <laughs> it takes a couple of cuts too when you you're cutting somebody and you know their hair is not laying the way you wanted to lay Play, right. whatever and you just got to play with it to get get to where you want it exactly and like craig said when you give that consultation it's in point and they're very satisfied they're going to come back mm-hmm. and, you know and that second time you're just going to do better and that's what a referral comes in exactly <clears throat> so that's why the question is what would you rather a referral or a tip? and i think every new student <clears throat> not just new student but every barber just start thinking about that what would you rather have, a referral or a tip? Or do something like, your haircut's free today if you do, if you shout me on Instagram. I'm about to start doing it all the time with the students. Be like, yo, if you just, I, I, I actually did, I've been doing it. Like, hey, you know, don't worry about your cut today. If you put this on so-and-so, then that promotes And, that, and that's marketing. Mm-hmm. And just say, hey, man, my guy right here gave me a bet, and I really appreciate it. I just paid, <laughs> just paid $20 for a 24-hour advertising spot, you know, and this person's got, 8,000 followers. You look at all the people that you get impact and get to view yours for, for just a, a, a price of a haircut. I think this year, you talked 25, what came to my mind. I think we're going to do something for um, Breast Cancer Month where we'll probably try and cut in the school for 24 hours. That's cool. I, get, <clears> I don't know how we're going to, but see. Make it happen. Yeah. Like, or like coffee. free yeah. beer lineups through the month of uh, No Shave November. Yeah, but I want, I want to do something like do a 24 hour thing. Yeah. Continuous haircuts for like 24 hours for the students, just kind of. And every money that we, anything that we get donations will go towards breast cancer. I think that's one of the things we're going to do. Sounds dope. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Yeah. I'm interested. I'm in. Yeah. So again, and doing things like that is helps you with referrals as well. You know what I mean? So it helps. <laughs> and, it, it, it's, and another business too, like if you could partner with, like I know uh, Breaker did. They had the brewery that they did. Is that the brewery that they had? No, there? they did um, Johnson City Brewing. Yeah, <laughs> but they work together, <laughs> right? And, and they that way they can refer each other, so yes. they're both feeding the businesses together. You are, and and that's what it's about: working together and trying to build networking, just and the referrals. Because some bar, when you get caught up in thinking about, man, I didn't, I didn't get tip. 
that person leaving you is talking about how great experience that they had. How happy they were to get the service from you. And you're leaving them, they're leaving you, but you're bashing them. And that can make you, I think it'll make you feel better too. Like, make your job, I mean, why wouldn't I have a bad day? Because we love what we do. Yes. And if you're, if you're so caught up on getting a good tip and you don't get a good tip, why would you want to bum yourself like that and just make it harder on the next person? And then you're, and then you're going to tell the next kid, like the next person you cut all that ladders and then tip me. And then that poison just yeah, amplifies and just go through people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So. And, and don't stereotype who's going to, who's not going to tip. And that, that is something that I will definitely emphasize on is never expect, you know, tips from anybody. Like, you know, in my industry right now, you know, I have people that come in there and, you know, just regular work outfits, you know, and they, you mm -hmm. know, tip me on a regular basis. And then I have, you know, these guys that just come in, you know, straight off, straight off, you know, the street, you know, something like that. And, they throw, you know, big, big tips in the way, you know, yeah. forever grateful for that. You know, I always think, you know, you should tip and if it, you know, definitely, you know, show showcase that, show them that, you know, you appreciate their hard work, like five dollars, ten, even a couple dollars, you know. Yeah. But back to what I was saying, emphasizing is just don't stereotype at all in I, any industry like that. I think anybody that's worked in any industry that, that you that you get tips. You, they've all surprised at some points to where you know uh, and that you didn't expect something or you did expect something and didn't get anything and i think that's where that's when people do get upset is when you're working hard you're like oh so and so is gonna take care of me and then that and that's why your haircut should be where they're at how they should or whatever you're charging should be at a price where it's i think it's a for, for, for good for you because if if you work hard and give a service you don't have to feel any kind of you know Anything like that? I don't think. I, I think that's how it should be. I mean, that's just my opinion. You, sh if you, if you know you're worth twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, but you're only charging twenty and expect five, that's. I think that's your fault. I, I just, I just do. To be honest, when I was cutting in the shop, I know I'm an instructor now with the school and everything. I never expected a tip. Mm -hmm. My whole time working the shop, I never expected a tip. If a tip came, <clears throat> I was happy. It was a bonus. I was like, yeah, he tipped me. And I never looked at someone and said they're gonna tip better than the other. And I know it's hard to believe, but my whole cutting career since I opened my shop in 2004 to when I went into the instructor field in 2016, 2017, <clears throat> I was just cutting in pure adrenaline, cutting in pure passion. Yeah, I loved what I was doing so much. So if you gave me my price gave me what I charged. I was good. That's how I am with it. But uh, but uh, like I said, I mean, you you know what you're charging. I was good, and and back then, <clears throat> and even 2017. I mean, my haircuts was we was charging twenty dollars for a haircut in the bedroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that seems like man, that's just a regular haircut now. Yeah. Four years later, five years later, you know what I mean? And I was just happy just to get that. And I was getting, and I had my clientele was really up there and I was doing really well. And I was just, it was just a passion. I loved what I do. So if you love what you do, you're not even looking for it. And when it comes, it's just going to make you happier. Of course. And I'm still fueled off that. Like I still, like, I mean, even though that I feel like I have raised my prices throughout my career, I still feel just as much of as I'm doing a service to somebody, not for the money, but just to to help somebody, maybe listen to them or give them a haircut for a job. Day. Exactly. Like that's how I look at it more so than I look at it for, Hey, I need to bust through this head and get to the next one. And I just can't, I can't even fathom, you know, maybe, maybe if you're in a hard situation that you need the money, but I still can't even fathom need it doing that. Just get out. Next one, come in. And then, and then I think your love for the industry will go fast when you start thinking like that. For sure. If it, if it's not something that you love to do, if it's not passionate in your soul, your heart, and your mind, <clears throat> the love for the industry will go quick. Because you, it's it's a chore now. It's it's something that you you, you like you, you almost don't want to do if someone don't take care of you. But it shouldn't be that because this is art. 
I, we we look at it as art. We are artists. Mm -hmm. We are creating a, a, a mold and creating this beautiful object that's leaving every 25 to 35, some 45 minutes. And you're creating another mold again. And you you it leaves you to share with the world. That's how I looked at Barbara. Yeah. That's how I look at it today. It's a it's 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 my match the piece that everyone is out there going to see and I'm sharing with the world. I think that, like you said, if you're first, like your last, and lastly, for message, everything, like the reason that you fight that is because the moment you stop, you lose that passion and tell yourself that you're just here for the money. That's when it becomes a job and that's when you're coming unsatisfied in your job and, and it makes life harder. You know, no, you know, for me, for me, hard for me was you know getting up at 5 a.m going to work prison that started getting hard right you know and i and i didn't like it and i had to do something else and thankfully you, you see what i'm saying yeah and, uh, it, it definitely it becomes a chore at that at that point like y'all said but mm -hmm. like and back to what craig said if you have a passion for it you know where you're taking every cut and then you're just doing the little extra you know to satisfy the customer and then they go out and showcase that there's been plenty of times where i've gotten my hair cut at, uh, my friend Devon's at Levels Barber Shop, shout out. And uh, get my hair cut and straight to work. And I'm looking good, crispy, and confident. Confident. And when people walk in the door, I'm the first person they see. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple <laughs> times where they're like, you know, hey, the haircut looks really good. Oh, well, I got it at my friend Devon's yeah. up over here, up the road. Go check them out. And then just by doing that, you know, it makes me appreciate what he's done for me. All right. You know, style me up, cut me up. And then on top of that, he's also talking to me on the chair. Yeah. Making me feel, you know, important. Mm -hmm. Making me feel not just like a customer, but just as a friend with a personal relationship and bond. So so do you feel that um just talking about barber students? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you think they should focus on tips? How, how do you feel about that? What do you mean? Cause I, I think when you're in barber school college, it's nice to get a tip, but I don't think that you should even think about that. The only thing I think that if you're really in, in like concerned about being the best you can, that you're so overwhelmed at first about all the stuff that you're, you're learning and, and need to learn that you're not even thinking about money, that you're just trying to focus on what what you need to do to get better. But being in the industry and watching it unfold, we have a lot of students who focus on that first and not think about the craft. Now, how many of those students do you think are more successful students? <clears throat> I don't know, but I know it's, it's it, the percentage is probably low. But sometimes, you know, it, it could be a positive reinforcement thing in a way. But if you think about, if you think about, hey, you know, they start making money and, and getting doing better, that might ins inspire them to to be better. I'm not saying don't get tips. Yeah, I'm saying don't focus on the tip because you're not. You, you have to build that passion first. Yeah. Build that passion first and build that work ethic and hone your craft. I mean, and people are going to, because you're in school, people are going to want to tip anyway because you're a student. <clears throat> you want to good at this. They can see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're going to give you a tip just because. And every student, I feel like, does the best they can every single time. A hundred percent, like... They put all they can into it, at least until the point that they're so frustrated. Well, not, not, <laughs> well, not, well, not, well, not every student. It, it, most, like a, a good, a good more than not. Yeah. I, I, well, the the students that I, I mean, just like anything, <laughs> if your heart's not in it, eventually it's not gonna work. It's, it's not gonna, gonna show. Work. It's gonna happen. When I mean, the grass is cut. Exactly. Another it, one of my homies quote: "When the grass is cut, the snakes will show." Yeah, I mean it's it's just how it is. That's natural selection, you know. If you're not in this industry with 100% trying to be the best you can, those people will show. If it don't show now, it'll show later. Right. And if it don't show later, it'll show at the end. And it's a learned skill, and you have to acquire. It. You have to go into it and build and grow and hone it. And it's like and a just, child, you got to nurture it and nurture it. And yeah. during that 1,500 hours, that 10, 11 months, grow. Take your time and build. Of course. Do it to the best of your ability and understand you have plenty to grow. Yeah. You have plenty to go. When you're in the barber <clears throat> college, you know, you are a student. And which to answer Craig, your question to the students who 
are quickly jumping into the schools and already expecting tips. How much learning have you done to, you know, think about that? How good of a job did you do? Mind you, you're also a student. Yes, yeah, some students come in there and they quickly, they're quick learners, you know, and stuff like that. So there's going to be some more advanced. Mm -hmm. But as your time as a student, don't, don't work for the tip. Work for the craft, the passion you're about to build, yeah. you know. And just as Craig, for example, you know, his passion. And I've known Craig for a while. He was cutting me up in high school. And we just clicked, you know, and it was just because I went in there one day and I was like, hey, you cut one of my homies hair on the football team. Yeah, that's, you know, just networked it. Got haircuts, started becoming an irregular, just, you know, uh, became friends. And, you know, to this day we hang out. But, you know, it was just his passion mm -hmm. that is just amazes me. And just in any barber, barber student that he has, you know, taught, you know, the passion that they grow. That's the tip that, you know, you should expect is that passion. Yeah. And just the love for your craft. You know, if I didn't love what I did, I wouldn't work, you know, at the brewery. And now, you know, I'm there. I'm there full time. I love what I do. And I look at Craig. You know, he loves what he does. Mm -hmm. Anytime we see each other for like 30 seconds, a minute, just, right. you know, at the restaurant or at the shop, you know, it's, hey, how's everything going? How's the barbering? How's the students? So passionate about it. Yeah. And that's what you should focus on first as a student. I was reading a book um, the other day and it was saying how, and Ron sent me the quote and said, um, you're like, you can't, com you can't compete with me because you all are working. I'm not working. I, I do this. I enjoy this. This is fun for me. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you could ever surpass me because I'm not even working. <laughs> You you have to work to be, but I'm not even working. It's just it's just natural. That's I enjoy dope. doing it. It's, it's a, and that's why when I tell people, from the first I started in my barber shop when I opened the shop in 2004, I never had a day where I didn't want to go to work. That's what that quote comes from. You're working. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah, and and it's and it's funny how that happens because it seems like the money part of it just kind of comes it and comes. It, 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 you don't even think about it it's naturally, just like here it naturally you go. flows and yeah and, and the barber thing you really see it because you're like you're just up here trying to be the best you could be and in doing that people are like wow you, you're really good here's my money you, yes. you know and that's the cool part about it you know it's just like and i want to show you through you know i through money how much i really appreciate what you do and there's not too many industries where you'll become friends with people and they'll come see you every day and they'll pay you bartender yeah <laughs> different every day they come to see you every day people come to see you every day a brewery is, is it, what was a brewery uh, assistant uh i'm a brewer's assistant but i'm also a uh, bartender okay brewmaster uh, ted is my uh brewmaster ted cantron and yeah uh, you know look at him for example and i'll put it this way you know ted doesn't work in the front I, i'm in control yeah and i'm showcasing his craft and he's there at early crack of dawn. I've been in there like just half dead asleep. He's wired. He's teaching me all these things. He's doing so many things. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then it's my turn to turn on my switch and then showcase that. You know, I can tell you all about it, you know, down to just beautiful colors and tastings, balancings that, you know, he does. And once you build that passion and stuff like that, everything just flows and people start appreciating that. And, and that's kind of like barbering too, where it's like, you know, like we said, one fade eventually looks like the same fade. I mean, even though I'm sure he does make some good beer, you know, at the end of the day, beer is beer and they could, you know, it's a lot of craft places. So you putting yourself into it and marketing it and it, and as well as the quality of it is really what builds the whole structure of it. So what was the importance of this topic today? What do you guys think? Don't expect it'll come to you. It'll come to you when it's right. It's right. GA to your craft. They're, they're going to tip you. And you're going to, you know, it's going to make your day brighter, but don't let it, you know, get you down if you don't get tip from that customer. He might have just told 30 people mm -hmm. about your, your haircut. And then it's going to come. But enjoy the enjoy the passion of barbering. Tips was going to come with that. 
and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Latch yourself to loving what you do, no matter what it is. Latch yourself to it, and when you first come in and you have that drive and love, wrap your arms around to it and hold it tight, and let that carry you through your career. Because if you try to let go and reach for money, then that's that's where you're going to be stuck. That's right. where that's you're going to be you're going you're going to let go of the passion rocket ship. And you're gonna be stuck on planet money, and that's yeah. the only place you're gonna be. So and then you, when you realize time is just gonna keep going forward. Yeah, you got a whole galaxy of experiences that you could you could be at, but instead you dropped off at planet money and you ain't got no ride off of it. Exactly. So one way to do that is to maximize your time while you're in training. <clears throat> if you maximize your time while you're in training in school, in barber school, cosmetology school, nails, whatever in the cosmetology field, you maximize your time while you're training. Learn all the intricacies. Make that your passion. What you're setting yourself up for is to know your worth, how to get a price point for you to work. So when you make that price point for you, you're not even thinking about the tip. Because you know your worth. You have maximized your time. You've done everything asked of you in this industry. You've done everything asked of you during the time of training, during those 1,500 Hours, 1100 hours, 750, or whatever amount of hours it is. You've done, you've maximized your time. You've studied hard. You've learned all, everything about consultation, customer service. You've practiced it. You've honed your skills in it. And you leave, graduate, you have your certificate, your diploma. You know what price you're going to be at. But if you don't take it serious from day one and don't hone your skills while you're in school, Boss that theory out. Boss that textbook out. Boss your practicals out. Do them well and excel. Earn the crown. Earn the crown. Yeah, you're right. Earn the crown. Hashtag earn the crown. Do those things right and do those things well because you'll know your worth. And once you know your worth, you'll set your price for your product. You'll set your price for your service. And if you continue learning, growing... <clears throat> Your price will grow too. Yes, or at least your worth. And everybody around you will grow as well. You know, yeah. you keep and like Craig always did, and this was something I just seen him do. And when we come in and work in the morning, he came in, you know, suit, tie, all looking good, snazzy, ready to take on the day. And any student he come in, good morning, good morning, good morning, be up in the front, transition to the, uh, the classroom and just talk but just hearing craig talk seeing him just be so passionate about it get so excited to see one of his students you know perfect that haircut or he's just looking and you know he's going to ask the student like hey look at double check this tell me what's wrong and they fix that error and just, craig has the biggest smile hmm. and that's just the passion and the love for the barber industry that he wants to show everybody that there should be at times is just loving one another, respecting everybody's, uh, you know, work ethic and just growing everybody, making everybody grow and elevate. And that includes you on the other end of this broadcast. You <laughs> listen, respect, right? respect the game. Bottom exactly. Line. Respect the game. Bottom line. And again, Barber College Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Cron Cuts Academy. Johnson City brought to you by Crown Cuts Academy Bristol and Craig's Crown Cuts Downtown JC. Shout out again to Feed Spot for ranking us in the top 25 of podcasts in the country and the world. You can check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. If you have any questions, send us a question. I mean, we get questions all the time. I get plenty of emails. If you have questions about Google, any questions you have something relating to your instructor I can help you with. Any questions about just getting better, just hit us up. Um, and what we'll do, maybe we'll get one of, you, one of our guests to come on our podcast via Zoom. I would like that. If you're a guest out there, wherever you are in this country, in the world, and you want to get on this podcast, I can shoot you in the studio via Zoom, and we'll talk about your experience. <clears throat> yeah, we'll just bring you on and go from there. To all our listeners, again, if you want to get on our podcast, shoot us an email, contact us through Instagram, Zoom, Facebook, whatever. And let, let me know. I'll pick one and maybe here in the next month or so, I'll get you guys on the podcast and we'll come up with an interesting topic. One of your topics that you pick.
and we'll talk about it with you on there live you could be because we have we right now we're broadcasting about what 45 50 countries around the world so I, I would love to get a guest coming from japan and want to talk about barbering or even russia, russia. even germany russia BW. or in the caribbean or even the united states somewhere in, in chicago in la wherever you are in washington in boston in florida in the caribbean anywhere you guys are listening send me a, a message and i'll try to get you on the podcast i'll make that happen me and my guests mr G am i and dd <laughs> <laughs> for sure it's uh it's been a pleasure being here and um just seeing like i said seeing you grow with the barbering industry and the barbering college now having one of the best barber podcast yes you're you're changing you're changing the world and that's something that you always wanted to do one step at a time that's it one step at a time so i know you was a little nervous what was you nervous about Man, it's just been a minute, <laughs> you know, been a minute talk, talking about the industry. But once, once you know, working with you, you taught me that a lot. You know, I come in nervous, that's very jitters, but that's part of it. Don't you, you know, now you can kind of see me now, you know, more laid back. <laughs> but it's no, everybody gets in the podcast, they always say they're nervous. And once yeah. we start talking, they realize we're just having a conversation in the living room. It's just talking. I don't yeah. wear the sunglasses, though. <laughs> things, those things are dope. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate I don't want the whole thing. The stone, yeah, I thought of it. The stone cold, bling, bling. <laughs> yes, no. sir. So, what are your lasting words for um, the listeners out there um, when we finish and close out? If you're looking to join the barber industry, 809 North Run Street, Johnson City, Tennessee, um, Craig's Crown Cuts Academy definitely is the way to go. And it's a good uh, start to and a good base because you're going to have a really phenomenal instructor in helping you get to you want to go in the industry. So don't be afraid to reach out, you know, via email, via just a quick message. Yep, yep. You know. Check us out. Also, in Bristol, 805 Commonwealth Avenue in Bristol, Virginia, we have two locations. Mr. Amai, your closing thoughts? If you want to go to Planet Money, we can drop you off at Planet Money. But we we got a rocket ship to see a whole galaxy. So, ah, there so, we go. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, uh.